Hello gainers and gadabouts, Ralphie here with some fitter philosophy, sharing the fitness and the philosophy two as one to enhance the benefit of both. Right, subject today, alcohol. A subject with which I have some familiarity, seeing as my other YouTube channel is as a spirits reviewer, how do you mix the both? No pun intended. Mixing alcohol and fitness, it can be done so long as it is moderate consumption of alcohol in context without interfering with the tangible benefits of gym progress, of putting on a bit of muscle, of additional fitness, it's complementing the fitness rather than undermining it. And really that is down to one fundamental pr principle. If you don't want to cut alcohol out completely, but you still want to look after your health, wealth, wellness and fitness, it's about, quanti it's about quantity being put aside and quality being your guiding principle. So you keep it quality, not quantity. I want to introduce three alcohols to you and uh, give you the benefits of them and the downsides of them in relation to fitness. But first of all, understand that there's the good and the bad in alcohol. If we are regular gym goers, regular gym bros and sisters, you know, in the gym doing our stuff, there's no harm in a weekend drink and maybe a small drink during the week, none at all. If you're a pro bodybuilder, it's a whole different level. You're not going to be drinking much, if anything at all. And in particular, if you're on anabolic steroids, if you are on prescription medication, you've got to be so, so careful what you drink, why you drink, when you drink, and do your research, particularly with anabolics. Oral anabolics in particular, but all anabolics stress the liver and the kidneys. But more than that, they stress all internal organs. We shouldn't look at things in isolation. As a result of which, if you're on anabolic steroids, cut out alcohol completely for the duration you're on them, including your post-psychotherapy duration. That's important. But for us who are not, not doing that, um, we can have a drink or two. In fact, here is a really good book. I love to recommend books now and again. It's by Franco Colombo. Franco Colombo was a very successful bodybuilder uh, back in the 1960s, 70s, uh, I think. <laughs> a contemporary of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, a wee guy with a big, big presence. And he's written a book called The Bodybuilder's Builder's Nutrition by Franco, Dr. Franco Colombo. And he's one of these generations of bodybuilders who's really done the academic side of it. He's really looked into it. It's a fascinating book. I recommend it to you because people tend to go, when it comes to bodybuilding, people tend to go for the encyclopedias and the big books. But the, the less well-read books contain valuable information and perspective based purely on someone's own research and actually doing the damn thing. And th this matters. His comments on alcohol, and he was known as a Sicilian, as a Mediterranean native, he would have a glass of wine, and many bodybuilders do have modest consumptions of alcohol when they are relaxing because it emphasises and complements their downtime as part of recovery. But here he mentions uh, the, the controversy regarding the damage versus the benefits of alcohol. And this is a really good place to start. In fact, this is, I focus the good and the bad on what I've been reading in this book. And essentially, it's how you manage your consumption. Right. Beer. Beer has less alcohol in it. Blue box, seven calories per gram. Alcohol is highly calorific. 
it's almost as calorific as fat. Fat, of course, and oils are at nine calories per gram. So if you get a glass of nice foaming, decent quality, and keep it quality, ale, um, it's a bit, a bit cloudy, but never mind, um, still tasty, you're looking at one glass, one and done, have a glass of beer, it's 4% alcohol, so we can mark it up to about there in alcohol. Taking over a prolonged period of time, so you're not just going to neck it and guzzle it, but if you take it, reading a book, having a meal, glass of beer, not too heavy with alcohol, about 45 percent tops, frankly no harm in that. Good quality ale has vitamins, and also it has hops in it. Hops are really good at helping you sleep. They are soporific. If we go on to wine, never, can I give you some advice here? Never buy bad wine. Time, life is too short for bad wine. Always buy good wine. So in other words, you look at the basic standard supermarket for price of a bottle of wine and then add just another five dollars five pounds just go a little bit above the basic level not too far you're going to get decent quality wine wine contains valuable nutrients it contains multivitamins it contains natural uh, sugars fructose sugars for example uh, which are easily absorbed by the body they don't require so much digestion and they contain um the thing that colours them, that is actually really good for your, your blood, and I've totally forgotten, but it's fine, I'm moving on, I'm not going to be faced by this little technical glitch. Wine, red wine or white wine, chill your white wine, see that volume, that volume of, gla of wine, in an evening, you're fine with that. Spirits. Spirits are the most concentrated, by the way, the wine, about 12 to 14% alcohol. Spirits, you're looking at basic Scotch whiskey, 40% alcohol, legal minimum, because it's a flavour thing. But you will find there are many whiskies that are higher strength. Now you've got to factor this into your consumption. Now I have a small standard whiskey glass containing 220 uh, mil, sorry, 20 mil of, of um, whiskey. <laughs> That's what it is. This is probably a really good portion that you can sip over the space of an hour and you're getting the smell, you're getting the flavour, just like with wine, just like with the beer, keep it quality, not quantity. And uh, very important, when you're drinking alcohol, uh, Franco Colombo mentions this in his book and I absolutely agree. When we absorb, absor when we absorb alcohol, through drinking it. It goes into our body, first of all it hits our stomach. Alcohol is a solvent. It dehydrates and it dehydrates systematically throughout the body. When we drink alcohol we pee less because our body needs to hold water more. Now sure with beer there's more water there, it's not such a problem. But with whiskey, particularly if you're overdoing it in the whiskey, you're starting to seriously dehydrate yourself. This is a very bad idea if you're trying to look after your health. Any alcohol, particularly, but particularly with spirits, have a big glass of water with them because it helps rehydrate the stressed organs, particularly the liver, which has to break down alcohol, and the kidneys, who have to flush it out. But it's... it's Throughout our bodies, we need to rehydrate systematically, internally, if we're consuming more than one or two glasses or any amount of spirit alcohol. The benefit with spirits is it may be high in alcohol, but it's low in sugar. Therefore, the calorific value is in the alcohol, not in carbohydrates. There you go. I shall remove these glasses now and conclude with three basic Good reasons to consume alcohol when you're at the gym and doing fitness and three bad reasons. And the final decision, of course, is entirely your own. It depends how into your fitness you are, if whether you're a hardcore crossfitter, whether you're semi-professional or, or highly intense amateur athlete, 
or whether you're someone that just likes the experience of going hardcore uh, without even being a professional bodybuilder because more and more of that is happening where amateurs are behaving like professionals because they choose to do so. It's, it's the morphing of a lifestyle. But three good reasons for consuming alcohol. Social relaxation. This is important. It's your downtime. If you have a little glass of wine or a glass of beer when you're chilling out with friends, you relax the body, you reduce the cortisol stressl, stress levels, which allows the body to go into a healthier ambient state to actually rest and sleep more deeply at night uh, and therefore you, you put on muscle better. For the first period of your sleep, your liver will focus on breaking down the alcohol that you have digested. But as soon as it has completed that, and you're really looking at a standard glass of whiskey takes an hour for the liver to digest, depending on your circumstance, you will then move on to processing the food you've eaten, the protein in it, breaking it down into nitrogen and absorbing it and using that to build muscle tissue to make the gains. Nutritious. Well, I mentioned the vitamins in beer and wine. Don't underestimate them. Alcoholic beverages can be very nutritional sources of nutrients. Life balancing. Um, it's all very well going hardcore, but for many of us, we can get intense with whatever we do for a short space of time, but we have to, so to, so to speak, come up for air. We have to give ourselves a break. Even professionals, professional sports people, they need time out. They need to give themselves a break. And um, when you're consuming alcohol during that period, but not when you're in your hardcore training zone, then, it is beneficial in moderation. The problems is that fundamentally alcohol consumption is the liver, liver digests it, but it's more than that, it's more complex. These things usually are. The liver needs time to digest alcohol, break it down. When it is doing that, it cannot break down proteins into the chemicals that the body needs for muscle growth. It's as simple, it can't do both at once got to understand that. Stress is the body. This isn't so much the moderate consumption as the overconsumption here. Anybody, any guy out there who's hammering the gym during the week and then going out on a Friday night and a Saturday night and getting hammered, getting rat arsed and pished and consuming half a bottle, even a bottle of spirits, frankly, you're not going to get away with it. You'll get away with it in the short term, not in the long term. You will wear yourself out, the wear and tear, and basically your life will become crap. So as you know. Particularly the liver. It's not just, you, you can go six days a week consuming no alcohol, have a really clean, clean food policy. But if you go out that one night of the week and you don't consume moderately, if you do hammer it, it's just going straight to the liver and the liver can't cope. Even worse, far, far worse, if you're consuming anabolic steroids. I, I, let me stress this, anabolic steroids and alcohol just do not mix. Never put them together, because you're going to trash yourself. And the addictive narcotic nature. Um, alcohol is a narcotic. It's like nicotine. It's like caffeine. We've got to understand that it is an addictive substance which, depending on our singularity, our psychology and our physiology and our simply our holistic susceptibility to addiction, we've got to be aware of it. If you look at your ancestors, your parents and your grandparents and see how they coped with alcohol or they coped with cigarettes or they coped with other narcotics, because there are plenty of others out there, you will find that we have to be constantly in tune with our susceptibility to going past the occasional enjoyment of an alcoholic beverage particularly in times of stress or difficult times in our life, 
It can become more than that. It can start to become addictive. These don't th things don't happen like a steam train hitting, hitting, hitting you. They creep up on you slowly, like a, like a horse trotting along in the distance. It doesn't look very fast. It doesn't look very impactful. Not like a train, but in its own way. Alcohol can slowly, it can take years, it can creep up on you. So be aware of that. Be alert to it. And there you have it. My advice on the good and bad of alcohol in relation to fitness and philosophy. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you'll pop back again when I shall be um, talking on a completely different subject and uh, sharing my experiences in that. And I just conclude by saying, you may have a question as a, as a whiskey reviewer. With all the bottles of whiskey, I open up over 50 bottles of whiskey a year. How the hell do I consume all that whiskey? And the fact is I don't, I consume very little. And recently, by the way, I'm consuming even less. And what I'm finding is that as the volume of my alcohol consumption goes down, my actual ability of my sense of smell and taste to enjoy and perceive the subtleties of good quality spirits is actually improving. Figure that one out. I'm Ralphie, happy to help. Hope you enjoyed this. See you soon. Bye-bye.